Hey everyone, it's Dilnea on The Big Debate on BBC Asian Network. This morning I'm asking, is it hard for young Asians to admit they're not religious? A survey says that 70% of 16 to 29 year olds in Britain have no religion. I want to find out how many of them are Asian and what's it like telling others that you don't have a religion. You can call me on 03459 440 text 81869, tweet at BBC Asian Network or email the big debate at bbc.co.uk. Let's get our chat going by speaking to Saba. That's not her real name. Uh, good morning, Saba. Hi, good morning. Morning. Um, what do you think? Is it hard for young Asians to admit they're not religious? Uh, yes. <laughs> so uh, I work with a project called Face to Face, and we kind of deal with um, pretty much um, anyone who has left any religion. But uh, there was a main focus on ex-Muslims, the so people who were from a Muslim background and decided to leave. Um, and I personally was actually, um, I'm, I am from a Muslim background, and I left, and I had quite a kind of horrendous um, situation in terms of telling my parents. Um, so it's definitely it's difficult. Um, it, it was difficult, did you say, to because yeah. you were cutting out a little bit. It was difficult to tell your parents. Yeah, it was very difficult to tell my parents. So I was disowned when I was 17 because I told my parents um, and I had no contact with them for several years there. Um, so it, it's definitely a difficult situation. And unfortunately, that's not a unique story. Mm. In, in, in terms of your parents, did you did you have a feeling that they would re respond in that way, or did it catch you by surprise? Um, I think um, deep down, I kind of knew they wouldn't be very accepting of it. I think it, it, you kind of know, it, especially in Islam, you kind of know it's not something that is widely accepted, and it's such a taboo thing. It's not going to go down easy. But for me, I didn't really think that that would be what would happen, especially as my parents are university educated, they're very liberal, westernised, so I kind of had all the markers of someone who should get off a bit easier than everyone else, but I had a very harsh treatment. Yeah, I'm trying to understand um, people's stories on this, and uh, I want to find out from you, when, when did you start to think that actually uh, I'm not religious, um, this isn't this isn't me. When when did it? When and how did that happen? Um, well, it started when I was quite young, and I think it was actually more trivial things that got to me in terms of uh, rather than like really big questions. So it kind of started out with I just didn't like to you know learn Arabic, and I couldn't really get my head around the idea of God being omniscient, but not be, not me being able to just speak in English when I say my prayers or read Quran or whatever. Um, so it, it was, it kind of started out with that and I just couldn't really get a good enough answer from anyone I asked. And then it kind of, kind of when I was about 12, I think I decided properly, yeah, I don't think this makes sense for me. And you don't, but you don't really do anything about it, especially at that age. You don't really care that much. And I think it was more when I got older, it was actually an issue. Mm. And, th and then, so what? What happened? You 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 said that it, you, at that age you probably don't care that much about it. How how long did it carry on before you then sort of decided that you had to sort of make it public by telling your yeah? Your well, family? I didn't really make it public. It was more um, when I was seventeen. It kind of just came out um, just because of um, the choices I was making in terms of dating and things like that. It was it it just became apparent and. It, just was forced out um, and then I got disowned by my whole family. So it was quite an upsetting experience, yeah. And you, when you say you got disowned by your family, nobody, uh, obviously your parents, but nobody in terms of cousins or anything like that um, supported you or? Uh, no, there was, there was no support in my family um, from any member, uh, which is quite disheartening, I think, especially as it's quite a hard thing to lose your family, especially at such a young age. Mm. So what you're saying backs up the question I'm asking, if it's, you know, that uh, if, if it's, is it hard for young Asians to admit they're religious, they're not religious, yeah. you're saying that it is very hard, very, very, you've paid, yeah. a, paid a big price. Yeah, I mean, I, I, even, if, even with people I know who aren't as, um, don't have as severe an issue with their family, it's always a certain price you have to pay to be honest with them. It's, it's, it's almost like when you come out as gay or something like that, it's quite similar in a way. 
it changes your relationship forever. Oh. Um, and it's really difficult to have that honest conversation without, you know, it, it's, it, it can be very hard to tell them, especially as often it's such a big part of your own identity and as well as your parents is. So renouncing it feels like almost betraying them, but you're not really trying to betray them. It's just you're saying how you feel. Yeah, was there was there anybody that you were able to confide in, you know, that you were able to share this with when while you were a teenager? Um, no, no. So um, definitely not. I actually took more of a route of just don't say anything and just kind of keep it to myself. Um, so, yeah, no, there was no one I could really talk to. I, I think those services and that support system is definitely lacking. And that's really what we're trying to do at Face to Face as well. We just try and provide that support system. Yeah, tell, tell me about um, your organisation. Um, mm. d- do you get many young people? You said you said earlier on that um, you know your your story isn't unique. Do you get many people coming to you with similar stories? Yes, I mean, especially with my story, it's young women, particularly. Um, it's so young men have it hard as well, but generally, young women get it a certain type of treatment whereas men get it slightly differently. Not that it's easy for men, it's just different. What, what, um, but, what, is, what is the difference? Sorry, if it just... So with women, there's a lot of um, modesty and, and uh, marriage, and it's a lot more... You get a lot more forced marriage issues there than with men. Not that men don't experience that as well. It's just more frequent in women. Um, maybe it's just a, a view of women, I'm not sure. Um, but it's, you do get a lot of young people... Um, come to us and they just say you know what I thought I was the only person that ever felt like this mm. and it's true like when, when I, everyone I know who has left genuinely believed they were the only person that felt like this in the whole world so you you, you, you feel sort of isolated within your family and or even amongst mm. your friends so it's, it's yeah. quite a hard thing then to actually come out and sort of publicly say that you're you haven't got a religion uh, if, yeah. a, if you're an Asian yeah, and we're a minority within a minority as well, so there's absolutely no protection for us. So if we're shunned by our own community, we kind of don't really have anyone. Mm. So what What if somebody's listening to you now and hearing your story and sort of thinks, hey, that's me as well. Um, there is there is somebody else that sort of feels the same way as me. What, what should they do? What would your advice be? Um... I think the most important thing is to reach out. I think it's very hard to admit to yourself sometimes, but I think you will feel better if you actually meet people who are like you. And there are those people that exist. It's hard to believe, uh, but they, we do exist. We do have communities. Um, and I think knowing that you're not alone is one of the easiest parts of it. So when I did it, I, there was no charity, there was no communities. I didn't know anyone. I did it all on my own. Um, but it's so much better if you can actually talk about all the, the certain problems you have to deal with day to day. And, you know, if you decide to tell your parents, then you do have to weigh up certain risks and you do have to plan beforehand, I would recommend, um, for certain situations. Um, it- and I think that's a lot easier to do if you actually reach out and did it get you down sort of feeling um lonely and isolated and feeling like you're the only person who felt that way oh yeah <laughs> yeah um it, it was definitely a very difficult time for me um i think also when you lose your religion you also lose certain aspects of your culture as well and as an asian woman that's really important to me and i'm very sad that i feel like i've lost some aspects of that um but i think you can there, there is a, a certain way forward and I think opening up this topic allows people to keep that part of their identity without you don't have to lose it just because you don't believe Um, and I think parents especially sometimes need to try not to be too judgmental and actually if they know that it's not you know completely abnormal to do this it might help people be more understanding when it happens to you know your brother your sister whoever Yeah. Very powerful story there from uh, Saba. That's not her real name. Um, Talking about it 
whether it we're, uh, this morning I'm asking whether it's hard for young Asians to admit they're not religious. Sabah says um, it is very, very hard. She's paid a very hard, pr- high price for it. The reason why we're talking about it is because a survey says that 70% of 16 to 29 year olds in Britain have no religion. We don't often hear from Asian people within that. Um, so, y- y- you know, here's your chance to tell us your story. You can remain anonymous if you like. Uh, um, you can call me on 03459 445. Text 81869. Tweet at BBC Asian Network or email thebigdebate at bbc.co.uk. Help us to understand, you know, what is it like? What are the things that sort of go through your mind? How does it make you feel? And how did you make your journey? Or how is your journey now? Let's go to Millie, who's a a guest of mine. Uh, Hello, Millie. Hello. Hello. You're a a, a blogger. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Um, Is it hard for young Asians to admit they're not religious? I think um, it definitely is. I think there's there's a real stigma about it because it's so ingrained into, you know, like Sabah was saying, it is a big part of the culture as well. It's not just religious, it's cultural. And you sort of, you know, you bond at religious events and stuff and you've got that identity tied in together. So um, it does sort of leave you at a bit of a crossroads. I mean, my own story is very different. Um, both of my parents are different religions. My dad is Sikh, my mum is Christian. So religion was never forced upon me and my brother. Um, so we were allowed to sort of make our own decisions and, you know, read about religion in general and, you know, come to a conclusion. And both myself and my brother are atheists. Um, but we don't feel we've missed out. But then again, my parents are very sort of opening, welcoming, accept- accepting. Um, you know, they weren't actually allowed to get married. So they sort of ran away to be together. So um, they they've always been very open about things but I do think that there's a real difficulty um, and I I think that you know I'm not surprised by the statistics that 70% of of young people say that they don't have a religion because you know things have changed times have changed we're more integrated um, perhaps than than our parents I mean so for example my dad had his formative years in India um, so all he knew was other Sikh people other Hindu people Um, whereas here you know you've got people from different backgrounds different religions different races so I think that sort of melting pot does get young people questioning their identity and actually, okay, this is the way I've been raised, but but is it right for me? It's a huge number, though, isn't it? If the survey mm-hmm. is is correct, um, the survey which was done by academics from St Mary's University in Twickenham, uh, which is in mm-hmm. London, um, and if if we to believe it, that's a huge number. Seventy percent of sixteen to twenty nine year olds in Britain um, say they haven't a religion. So I'm sure you know a huge number of those would probably um, be Asian. You would have thought, wouldn't you? I do think so, and I think you know surveys benefit from the fact that you can be anonymous. Obviously, you might have to put down your ethnicity, but you don't have to put down your name and address. And I think that's probably boosted the number um and you know with any sample size you're going to get a lot of british asians as well um but again like i said i'm not surprised i think a lot of young people want something tangible um and religion in in my opinion doesn't really offer that Mm. and and do do you think um because you're a blogger and you're you know you you look and take an interest in these sorts of things do you Mm. think that um You know, there's a difference in terms of some of our, you know, the Asian religions. Um, You know, we've got Hinduism, Sikhism, um, Islam, we've got Buddhism, we've got lots of Christians as well, lots of Mm -hmm. Catholics. Uh, The survey was carried out uh, on behalf of the Catholic um, religion. Yeah, I think, like I said, because it's so ingrained and and your parents sort of have this expectation of you from a very young age that, you know, you will do this with your life, you will marry someone of the same religion and you will have kids and they will be raised in that religion. That's very much, you know, um, what we're told at a very young age. I mean, I was fortunate in the fact that my parents were like, okay, well, we weren't allowed to get married, so we can't put that pressure on you. But I do have friends who, you know, they're not, you know, they're not allowed to date. They're certainly not allowed to date with that, you know, um, outside of their religion. And, you know, if they do find someone who isn't the same religion, either that person has to convert or they have to break up the relationship and have an arranged marriage. Mm. 
I'm, I'm, this morning I'm, I'm asking, is it hard for young Asians to admit they're not religious? That's because a survey says that 70%, 70% of 16 to 29-year-olds in Britain have no religion. I want to know what your stories are. Is it hard or is it easy to tell your family, friends, relatives? Um, you can call me on 03459 440 445. You can text 81869, tweet at BBC Asian Network or email the big debate at bbc.co. Dot UK. Let's uh, quickly rattle through a couple of um, messages that we've had. Well, this is from Leila in Stafford, who says, if Asian kids are not religious, then that's a good thing, as they've been subjected to it by their parents. Out of guilt and pressure, kids will not say that they're not religious. It's their choice. Uh, I assume she means it should be their choice. Um, here's a tweet uh, from Pasha, who says that um, it's hard because such communities still have a hard time believing that their children can leave their religion despite living in a country which gives them so much freedom. Uh, I want to know what you think as well. Join the discussion. Um, let's bring in uh, Dr. Jasjeet uh, Singh, who's a guest of mine. Uh, you're a, um, uh, an academic from the University of Leeds and you research religious communities uh, in Britain. Um, what do you think? Is it hard for young Asians to admit they're not religious? Uh, good morning, Dale. Um, morning. Great discussion so far. Yeah, uh, I think... It actually depends on the tradition they belong to. So the, the first caller made a very interesting point about the concept of apostasy, which doesn't exist in all traditions. So obviously, I mean, her experience, which was quite harrowing, kind of demonstrate that it's, I think it's harder for, for people belonging to traditions which have a notion of apostasy to leave as, as, such as compared to ones that don't. And just in case um, nobody, uh, some people don't understand apostasy, what, sure. what do we mean by that? I think it's it's when it's actually, from what I understand, it's when the tradition itself says it says that you're not allowed to lead lead the you know the tradition, right? Okay. Um, which isn't isn't the case in, um, you know, in Sikhi and, and Hinduism as as far as I understand. Um, and I've you know I've researched young Sikhs and I've I've I've, I've kind of seen a, a bit of a move in both directions really, people moving away and people becoming more interested in religion. So, um, regards to the survey. I've, I mean, m most surveys generally wouldn't have a large um, South Asian representation f f in, in my experience. Um, so it'd be interesting to see what the percentage was. I, I don't think the data has been released yet, but when it, when it is, I'll certainly have a look at it. Yeah. And what about you yourself? You're a, you're a parent. Um, yeah. You're Sikh. Um, do you bring up your children as Sikhs? Um, yeah, but I kind of focus on the on the heritage aspects of it more than anything else. And cultural, actually, more cultural. Well, yeah. just just the, the the point is that you know you're born into a Sikh family, and that means that your 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 family itself comes from a particular background. So it isn't just about beliefs; it's all about it's about actually what that means on a day to day basis. And I think the, I think that the difference between the generation growing up in the UK as as, as compared to the previous generation is that. For the older generation, a lot of it is about community and kind of showing to the community that you're a religious family and it's all about your status as a family. Whereas I don't think the concept of community is that important for um, people born and brought up in, in Britain. So what, there isn't that thing about kind of showing to the community how, how religious you are. What, what about if, if your, your kids um, said to, the, to you that they're not religious? Um, what, yeah. how, how would that make you feel? I, so, I mean, fine. You know, I've, 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 I kind of explain what the, what the tradition means to me, and you know, they're they're more than more than happy more than happy for them to follow their own path because obviously you've got to you've got to respect your kids' decisions if you've raised them and their ability to think critically. So, yeah. Are you surprised that Sabah was saying that her parents were quite liberal, um, and and yet she she well, became well, disowned? About, she got cut off from the family. The notion of apostasy, specifically, I think, and the notion of apostasy specifically makes it harder for people to leave a tradition if that notion exists. Mm. This morning, uh, where I'm asking, is it hard for young Asians to admit they're not religious? That's because a survey says that 70% of 16 to 29 year olds in Britain have no religion. I want to know what you think. We've heard some stories this morning, um, some quite powerful stories. You can call me with your views and opinions or stories on 03459 440 445. You can text 81869. Tweet 
at BBC Asian Network or email the big debate at bbc.co.uk. Um, Millie, were you were you surprised um, w- when Saba said that um, her parents were liberal, um, not sort of I suppose stereotyped, y- y- you know, really conservative parents or anything like that. Quite liberal, quite open, and yet she ended up being cut off because she um, told them that she didn't have a religion, she didn't believe in religion. Not at all. I've, I've seen it with a lot of my Muslim friends. You know, their parents are liberal. They themselves have, you know, you wouldn't, you know, it's just their heritage that they're Muslim. It's not actually a day-to-day practice. But as soon as they sort of say, oh, you know, I want to do this or I want to do that to their, par- uh, to their parents, their, their parents are like, well, no, it's against our religion. And they're like, well, but we don't follow it anyway. Yeah, but you still have to have, you, you know, you still have to be a part of it somehow. And, Does that make sense? Yeah, um, and, and and we're not we're not saying in our discussion that religion is wrong and and having no religion is right or anything like that. We're just trying to understand what um, what the situation is when people think, sort of say yeah, that I actually they don't is right. believe in anything. I think it is. I think it is harder to leave certain religions, especially if you've got apostasy in it, because you know you you've got that sort of guilt. Um, you know, associated with it. That hold on, I've broken such a big rule. Um, and and it, it's about weighing up whether it's worth taking that risk, I guess. Mm. OK, um, we're discussing this morning whether it's hard for young Asians to admit they're not religious. A survey, as I said before, says that 70 percent. I mean, just just imagine that figure. 70 percent. That's huge. 70 percent of 16 to 29 year olds in Britain have no religion. I want to know what you think, what your views are or your stories. You can call me on 03459 440 Text 81869. Tweet at BBC Asian Network or email thebigdebate at bbc.co.uk. Let's go to Shahid, who's called in. Hello, Shahid. Hi. Hello. What do you think? Is it hard for young Asians to admit they're not religious? Um, it is. It is very, very, very hard. I mean, I'm the president of the uh, Lahore MDM movement in the UK, and uh, I find that generally. Uh, youngsters are discouraged from asking questions, uh, airing their doubts, uh, this idea that you respect your elders, and therefore whatever the imam of the mosque says, you just accept it without question, uh, is is prevalent. And um, um, uh, I know uh, youngsters have gone to mosque and asked a question, and they've been given a clip around the ear for being disrespectful. Uh, I mean, these, these, these guys, they, they, they're trying to find uh, what the reason is for their religion or certain commands of the religion uh, and put it in, into the context of um, this age and this society. And they should be encouraged from that because that, uh, to do that, that is creative thinking. And that helps their understanding of, in this case, uh, Islam. Now, unfortunately, the traditional thinking is that uh, apostasy is punishable by death in Islam as is uh, blasphemy. And most of these uh, youngsters are told that they're blaspheming. And if they were in this country or that country, they will uh, rightly have their head, heads cut off and all this kind of thing. Um, and I hasten mm. to add that our organization does not associate with any of these views yeah. that apostasy is punishment uh, um, by death. Because the Holy Quran says, you know, there's no compulsion in yeah. religion. Yeah. The right and the wrong way are clear. You follow whatever you want to follow. Mm. So, uh, that so there's, is, a, there's, a, there's quite a lot of confusion is, is basically what you're saying. Yeah, there's a huge amount of uh, confusion uh, amongst the Muslims themselves. Mm. And this is why they're unable to explain to the youngsters and uh, answer their, uh, their questions. Okay. I mean, Thank our you. organization actually openly encourages youngsters to come and speak at our me- uh, meetings. We have a monthly meeting uh, and we generally have a youngster and I would say someone under 25 uh, who makes a speech. And sometimes it is critical of, uh, you know, what we're saying and what we're thinking. Mm. And afterwards we ask questions and, and we discuss it. 
but no one gives them a clip around the ear and say, you know, the Hori MDs believe this. How do you, how dare you say that? You know. Mm. That's interesting. Thank you very much for sharing that with us. Uh, that's Shahid, who's uh, called in to tell us his uh, views. Uh, and we're asking this morning, or I'm asking this morning, is it hard for young Asians to admit they're not religious? A survey says that 70% of 16 to 29-year-olds in Britain have no religion. Uh, I want to know what you think. Do you agree with that? Or um, maybe you disagree with it? You can call me on 03459 440445, text 81869, tweet at BBC Asian Network, or email the big debate at bbc.co.uk. Let's go to Malik, who's called in, who's from Leicester. Um, what do you think, Malik? Is it hard for young Asians to admit they're not religious? Good morning to you. Uh, Good morning. Uh, look, it, it, it's not a very simple question. It's not that bunch of homogeneous gr- or group of people. It's uh, They are different. I mean, in my observation for the past 15 years in this country, it's... Um, and let me address the elephant in the room, And as your previous scholars were saying. Um, it's a bit difficult uh, when it comes to Islam compared to when you talk about Hinduism, Sikhism, Buddhism. I think with Islam and Judaism uh, are the two particular religions where it is a little bit difficult in the sense that these religions are integral part of you. It's not about the cultural thing. I disagree with whoever said that this is a cultural thing. No. The religion itself is a part, integral part of your life. Particularly when it comes to Islam, because you implement Islam in your day-to-day life. Even, I've, um, I've, I've, spoken even, to, I've spoken to some Sikhs and Hindus as well who say that actually it's really tough for them to tell their families um, that they, they don't believe in the faith anymore. Okay, because fine. it means so much to the parents and to the family. In, I, I, I give you my observation. In 16 years here in this country, I've come across with uh, three cases uh, where the girl wanted to marry uh, a Muslim boy and uh, uh, wanted to change the religion, and the parents went out of their way to, to stop the lady. Other than that, I'll be honest with you, uh, and two cases were the sick girls. Uh, but other than that, I've not seen it so drastic also. But when it comes to Islam, yes, your previous scholar was right. In the Quran, it says there is no compulsion in the religion. And generally speaking, yes, it is. People misunderstand the verses and misquote the thing. And like your previous scholar was saying about apostasy and this and that, it's not that. People do find it difficult in the faith of Islam when you try and ridicule the faith. When you come out of the faith, like your previous caller, I mean your first caller. Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? What, what about the? Sorry to interrupt you, Malik, but but is it? Um, you know, when we say um, parents, um, uh, you know, sort of want their children to have a particular religion um, and faith and belief. You know, are we are we are we slightly being unfair on them that actually they believe that this is the best thing for them in terms of the values, the belief systems, and all of that sort of stuff, and and so actually, you know, it's not that they um, want to um, uh, you know force their kids into the religion; they genuinely believe this is the best thing for them. It is true that parents genuinely believe that they are passing the best values that they inherited from their forefathers to their children. And that's what that's what the parenthood is all about, that you want the best for your child. Now, when that child becomes an adult, they are free of their making their own choices. And I, I do believe parents become old and they do not have that much of an influence on, on, on an adult to force them about anything. My only concern is people do not understand this thing that when it comes to Islam, it's not, you can't force anyone to accept Islam by hook or by crook or by force or by influence. No, it's that when people get out of the faith and they start ridiculing the faith, when it, that where it becomes a sort of a problem mm. I, for people who call themselves ex Muslim. Fine, you leave your life. Yeah. I mean, but, but, but Malik, in, the, country, if we, in the, this country, nobody has. Malik, you. Malik, sorry to interrupt you, but when, when we heard earlier the Sabah story, um, yeah. her parents I were very. I didn't, disagree, I didn't agree with her at all. Yeah, no, fine. We're, 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 nobody needs to. Um, we're not saying that everybody should feel the same. We want to hear everybody's different opinions, and that's what yes. the show's all about. But um, what she was saying was that her parents were actually quite liberal, quite open. 
open-minded and yet she felt um you know, uh, well, not she felt, she was kicked out of the family and um, they don't talk to her anymore. Um, it, it, it isn't that they are in any way sort of taking the mickey or uh, undermining the faith and all of that. They just don't believe it. Look, to be fair, I can't comment on, on Sabbath's parent, on, on, on her attitude or with them or their attitude towards her. I don't know about them. I don't know them personally, so I, it's it's not fair for me mm. to. I can only go what she told me, and if that's happened, it's a very sad situation. However, what I do not agree or understand, what what I do not understand that age, at the age of twelve you dis, you 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 disagree with learning the language, and therefore you decided to come out of the religion that that's not for you. This is something that beyonds me. Look, what what about Malik? Let me if, be if, very honest. Let, if I finish yep. my point, let me be very honest with you. When I came to this country, I went through a phase where I seriously questioned my faith. Seriously questioned my faith. I'll be honest with you. Then I was given an advice by an imam that, look, before you decide anything, you should know the topic in hand. You should know some information. You should acquire some information, some knowledge, and then you decide. So then I started looking into the religion. I looked into Christianity. I looked into Hinduism, and I looked into Islam, and then things started to make sense to me. And by the grace of God, I'll be honest with you, I'm not, I'm not very proud to say that I'm still not a full practicing Muslim, which I should be. But I do understand the logic behind it. I do understand... What, Malik, what, what, what about if your children um, turned around and sort of said, I, I don't believe in, uh, in um, or I'm not religious, Dad? What would you say? I will disagree with them wholeheartedly, right? I cannot suppress my love, my feelings towards them, but I will challenge them wherever I can. But I will not stop loving them, but I will disagree with them wholeheartedly, completely, end of the matter. Mm. Okay, that's interesting. Um, so it's it's quite an interesting discussion we're having here. Lots of want to hear your stories uh, in terms of whether you think it's hard for young Asians to admit they're not religious. A survey says that 70% of young people in Britain have no religion. Um, is that you? Are you somebody who has um, turned away from their religion, who doesn't believe in religion anymore? What was it like? Was it easy or hard for you to tell people? Or have you still not told people because it is really challenging and you don't want to end up being booted out of your family? You can call me on 03459 440 445, text 81869, tweet at BBC Asian Network or email thebigdebate at bbc.co.uk. Um, I want to speak to Imtiaz, who's a guest of mine. Um, hello, Imtiaz. Hi, thanks for having me. Hi, no, pleasure. Thank you for joining us. Um, you're you're the, the chairman and founder of Faith to Faithless. Um, what do you think? Is it hard for young Asians to admit they're not religious? Oh, absolutely. I mean, forget about Asians. It's hard for everyone. Uh, people who leave their faith routinely get shunned, they get disowned, they get made homeless, all that kind of thing. And I think for Asians, we're a minority uh at least in the West, we're obviously minorities. And then if you leave your faith, you become a minority within a minority. So we come across, you know, people who leave Sikhism, people who leave Islam, even people who leave Hinduism, which is counterintuitive for a lot of people, it can be extremely difficult. Um, and, and, and the problems you face, it's a wide range of things. It's, you know, often with Islam, for example, people talk about death threats. But actually for the wide range of people who lead Islam when they call themselves ex-Muslims, a lot of the problems are to do with family, it's to do with being cut off, it's to do with being shunned at weddings, that kind of thing, you know? Mm. So it's, it's in, in a sense, what you're suggesting is, actually, you're, if, you, if you're a young Asian and you decide, I'm not religious, and you tell your, your family, you end up, you potentially could end up sort of um, losing your family, losing your sort of like cultural network uh, as well. Um, all of those sorts of bonds. 
Exactly. We tend to grow up in relatively collectivist cultures. And for many of us, it's an important part of our life, right? Not for everyone, but it is for a lot of us. So imagine there's a double whammy when you're cut off from your family and you're also cut off from that network that you have. Everyone you grew up with, all your cousins, all your friends, they start shunning you. They don't talk to you. They look at you weird. You become that kid that no one talks about. You know, you're brushed under the carpet. So you can understand why it leads to such immense mental health problems for these young people. Oh, really? It, 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 it 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 causes that that sort of level of problem yeah 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 you get suicides you get self harm i mean the sheer number and weight of mental health problems with people who leave their faith is insane in this country and i mean our charity faith to faith is we're very much concerned about how the services whether it's the police you know therapists things like that just are not doing enough when it comes to apostasy and what what they don't um, know how to recognize it how, how many people give us a sense of the scale in terms of the people that you deal with how many young people sure. do you do you get and over what sort of period so we get I, w- I would say we get three different types of people we get people in the UK and they tend to be Jehovah's witnesses who leave ex-muslims you know um ex-christians from presbyterian or you know black families for example we get lots of people from who are asylum seekers who are either trying to enter the Europe or they're from other countries and they're in big trouble in Islamic countries and uh, and obviously we get occasionally some converts to religions as well. What's really interesting in terms of scale is a recent survey that came out of America around Muslims. 23% of American Muslims no longer identify with their faith. 23%, right? So what is happening is that this is becoming... We've hit a tipping point when people, when it comes to people talking about leaving the faith. It's because everyone's online now. You know, there's a lot of these conversations happening, including on BBC Asian Network. And I think young people are kind of engaging with that. But when they're leaving, there's still no real outlet for that. You know, you still feel like you're the only one. When I left Islam, I thought I was, I was sure I was the only person in the whole world out of 1.8 billion Muslims who had left. That's how isolating it is, and, and that's that's the same. That sorry, that's the same thing that Saba said as well. That oh, um, she felt she was the only every, one. Every time you meet someone who's left Islam, they laugh and they go, oh, "I thought the same thing." It's the it's a constant. And Jehovah's Witnesses in this country have the same problem. They'll meet each other and they laugh. They'll say, "Oh my God, I thought I was the only one." Because there are certain high control elements that you get within certain interpretations of faith and and commu- in certain communities. And in Islam, one of the biggest thing is to say, "You don't exist. You cannot leave it because no one does it." Right. So it's this kind of pitting neighbors against each other type thing going on, you know? Mm. Oh, no one's done that before. You're the only one. You're going to be on the streets selling drugs and prostituting yourself. Mm. And okay. we're, 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 we're talking about all religions here, aren't we? We're, we're talking about not only Islam, but Sikhism, Hinduism, Absolutely. Buddhism, yes, yes, yes. Christianity, because there's a lot of uh, Catholic Asians. <laughs> We've had one speaker who is an ex-Hindu. He identifies as ex-Hindu. He's an atheist. He just doesn't identify with Hindu uh, theology in any way, right? Uh, now, people were... That was that video had the most hate I've ever seen because you got a lot of these people saying, oh, you can be an atheist in Hindu. You don't know what you're talking about, you know, um, and just cussing him out and saying that he didn't know what he was talking about, even though he grew up in quite a strong Hindu family. Mm-hmm. So people's agency of being able to talk gets taken away. And since we're minorities within minorities, we get double the discrimination. So we get, so, you know, people will trick, treat me like an Asian person, like a Muslim. But then on top of that, I get discrimination from my own community. Does okay. that make sense? Yeah, no, it, 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 it's, that's a message that's coming through loud and clear. Thank you very much, MTR. Uh, stay you, stay around if you can. So this morning I'm asking, is it hard for young Asians to admit they're not religious? A survey says that 70% of 16 to 29-year-olds in Britain have no religion. So I'm trying to find out how, how many of them are Asian, you know, and and then also whether it's hard or easy to leave your religion. What sort of reaction did you get? At what stage did you decide you wanted to leave? Uh, You could call me on 03459 440445, text 81869, tweet at BBC Asian Network or email thebigdebate at bbc.co.uk. Let's go to Lala. I love that name. um, Who's from Stoke, um, who's called in. Hello. Hello, uh, uh, hello to everybody. <laughs> hello to you. Yeah. Um, what do you think? Is it hard for young Asians to admit they're not religious? 
Uh, well, what's his name? You know, I don't think it's hard, right? Uh, I'm, I'm coming from uh, another angle, right? I mean, obviously, if a uh, young person, right, feels in that way, right, they are not religious, right? As I am as a parent, right, I would really, uh, was to be really upset and uh, think about it, right? Say, what's going on? You know what I mean? Sat him down and ask him where his uh, confusion is. Mm. But why, you know? why, why would you characterize it as confusion? Rather than them, because I say, look, where I'm coming from is right. I'm a Muslim myself, yeah. Right. If any of the kids, my kids, right, we are a family, yeah. So if they are, I mean, I can't, I wouldn't even imagine to believe what we call think about in my head if they said, oh, the non-religion is another thing. Hello, yeah. So, so you you would not accept it if your child. No, it's not said, rather of accepting. It's rather pointing right where is the problem is right because uh, what's his name? Young people, right now uh, they run uh, what's he call uh, what, what you discussing now? They leave in uh, religion or they finding it hard. It's not hard. Right. Yeah, but you're 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 saying that you you would you would try and correct their confusion. What if yes. they were certain about it and they said, "No, I do do not believe in any religion." What would you do then? Well, because that's know, what some I, people well, are saying. Yes, so some people are saying. But I'm, I've been in this community long time, right? And I can tell you cases right here. There's none of the person has uh, abandoned his religion. They may have gone haywire, like no, no, no. no. Can I, yeah, can yeah. I, but can and, and can don't I listen to me, face, right? Yeah. And if I if I come across them people, right, in later life, right, and I ask them the same question, right, how you now, right, and they still, they then don't alienate that religion. They say still say if they were on that religion, right? Say if they Muslim, they say I still believe in that, but I've been on the wrong path. What right. what would you say to that, Imtiaz? No. You, you no, speak no, 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 to no, no. Lala. This is a very, very common trope. This is uh, there's, an, there's a guy in fact in, in America who did a video recently. He's 70 years old. He's left Islam 50 years ago, right? So people always say, oh, you don't really understand your religion or you're too young, things like that, right? And the, 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 the problem I have with Faith to Faith is, is we work with every single religion. We don't care about any specific religion. And we come across the same thing over and over again. One of the easiest ways to shut someone up and to say, you don't know what you're talking about and to discriminate is to say, you don't understand your own religion. The thing is, like, you know, respectfully, uncle, like, you don't know much about probably any other religions like Mormonism, right? Like, mm. it doesn't mean that you don't have, you have to, you, you can't not believe in Mormonism because you don't study it. The point mm. is, young people are leaving religion. They're leaving Islam, they're leaving Sikhism, they're leaving Christianity. And we mm. just need to have a, a platform where we can allow them to have that conversation without telling them that they're wrong for doing it. You, can have a, well, you can't have a real honest debate. How can you have a real honest debate if we're worried about being kicked out of our homes? We can't. You can't have a real no, no, debate. No, no, no. Nobody's saying that, right? What I'm saying, but like, they you, they you, you are. Are. are good. They are. You, okay, you, you, so Lala, good reply. Point. What I'm saying, you're saying that you do cater for other religion and this and that. I can say from as a parent, right? I'm saying if you instill proper right uh, religion into your family right the actual way right not was a mixture of uh, different faith and different cultures right if you point that out to them clearly in life right and be a practical role model and i say 100 percent right 99 percent i will say they will not have what's his name go to another religion or what's in deviate you know what do you what do lala let 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 lala lala let 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 mtr's now reply to you he's he's listening to you you on that because i have worked with probably more people who've left religion than almost anyone else in the uk and let me tell you, it is the families that have the most religious children that leave their own faith. Because these, these children, if you are from a non-practicing family, yes, you might leave it. But if you're from a very practicing family, you're much more exposed to the theology. Right? So, for, for example, in my case, I grew up between the UK and Saudi Arabia. I grew up with, you know, Islam was such an important part of my life. I left it because I was exposed to the theology. And I think... It shouldn't matter if a kid is raised up in a very religious environment or not. That's not what we're arguing about here. It's that they should have the right and the chance to leave it and still be a member of the family. You are not necessarily the problem because you think 
I hope, you accept that if your child left Islam, you would still love and accept them. Even if definitely, you them. definitely, yeah. Okay. And that's um, important. That's where we've come to. That's, that's where we need yeah. to get to. We need to get to more families to be like you. Okay, Imtiaz and, and Lala, stay on the line if you can. Uh, I want to bring in some other callers. We're talking this morning about, uh, is it harder for young Asians to admit they're not religious? Um, a survey says that 70% of 16 to 29-year-olds in Britain have no religion, so that's got me wondering how many of them are, are Asian? Uh, are there only a few? Are there, you know, sort of like a, an average number, or are there actually lots? And if that's the case, why are we not hearing their stories? You can call me and let me know what you think on 03459 440445 text 81869 tweet at BBC Asian Network or email the big debate at bbc.co.uk I just want to bring in uh, Don Singh who's called us in hello Don hello Satrigal Satrigal to you as well uh, so what do you think is it hard for young Asians to admit they're not religious well it, 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 here's another way of putting it is it hard for those people who say they're religious to actually admit that really they're hypocrites and they're not uh, and extending from that, my heart was breaking when I heard that first caller. Sabah. was rejected from her family. What was her name, sorry? Saba. Well, we, we're yeah, calling her, her Saba. Yeah. Her alias, yeah. My heart broke there. What I'm saying is this. The other side is that we, I, I'm religious. I, I love Sikh religion. My wife is Christian. I love going to church. My children are Muslim from a previous relationship before people say, how is that possible? Uh, and, you know, we all accept each other just as we would accept a homosexual person, as we would accept an atheist, because we believe in Sikhi, Sarbat Kabbala, we say for all of humanity, and that includes all the aforementioned people. From a Sikh point of view, my understanding of Sikhi. Now, I'm saying, therefore, I, I, and Sikhi has seen me through very hard times, difficult times. The world is a crazy pace, a place. You know, all this madness going on. People say, well, where's religion? Religion's a cause of war. It's man's interpretation of religion as a cause of war. And the true believers, the Two true people who practice their religion should step up their game because if it works for them, whether it's to do with depression, whether it's to do with having conviction, a purpose in life, you have to believe that God is so loving. Let's not fear God. It's not about fearing God after do something out of fear. It's because I love God and I love being religious because of what it brings to me, peace, purpose, and the fact that ultimately if you die as an atheist, then I think you can still enter the kingdom of heaven, whichever name you want to give to it, Nirvana, or whether you think it's, you know, returning to the cosmos, whatever it is. I think an atheist who lived a righteous life can still be accepted by God, who we describe as omnipotent, who okay. we describe as forgiving, as all Don, loving. Don, so I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm hearing your views loud and clear, and they're fantastic in the sense that you're expressing yourself, and it's wonderful to hear. And we're asking, or I'm asking, is it hard for young Asians to admit they're not religious? I want to go through to Sharik, who's called in. Um, hello, Sharik. Yeah. Hi. Hello. Um, what do you think? Is it hard for young Asians to admit they're not religious? I think it's quite hard. And uh, the reason is, like it's been discussed on the, uh, on the show already, it's friends and family and the reactions that you get. It's, there's a lot of how, how could you do this? It's because you can't understand this. But the other, thi the other thing that I've observed in the show, that, that, that's why I called in, is that there's a lot of victim blaming that goes on. Quite often people have suffered a lot because of their religion. At the very least, it's cognitive dissonance. And at the worst, it's uh, active harm that's happened to them in the name of religion. And sometimes people just want to change their mind. But then we hear things like this is because of confusion. It's because you don't understand the faith. It's because, oh, you just want to drink. You just want to have sex. So, but sometimes people just say, this doesn't make sense. And I just don't want to, I don't want to follow this anymore. What about, about that? What about you, Sharik? Um, where do you stand? Are you, are you religious or? I'm not religious. Not religious. I'm quite <laughs> open about not being religious. I think uh, I'm, I'm quite clear and I'm happy to explain that to anyone who asks. Uh, I'm from India myself. I've been in the UK about 12 years or so. And uh, India actually is quite a plural society. It came up later that, you know, it's, it's more closed. But actually, India has loads of religions. And somehow people, it seems to sit easier with people. The cultural aspects continue. But there's all sorts of levels of practice and belief. And somehow it just carries on. I find the lines quite harder in the UK myself, especially mm. in the Muslim community. Which what what, what, more, was, it, what yeah. was it like when you, you, you went public, if I can say it in that way, but, um, when you told or have you told your family and friends? That I mean, my family, yes. I mean, my parents, I have expressed that quite clearly that, you know, I'm, I'm quite happy culturally with, with my heritage and my, my daughter, my, my wife's not Muslim, has never been. 
And uh, I'm, I've been very clear that, you know, she's, we're not going to put any dogma um, or any sort of belief this way or that down her throat. Or, or, although, I mean, people who are religious, would, would many of them would say it's not dogma, it's something that they fair genuinely enough. believe in. No, that's, 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 that's a fair point. I, I take back the word dogma, maybe. But I mean, it's not for me to choose what she isn't. Because when you do uh, choose a faith for your child, you're also choosing what they can't be. And also, there's 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 a bit of a one there's a bit of a Hotel California effect in in Islam in particular. What you do you mean by that? Any time you like, but you can never leave if you remember the song. <laughs> so I mean, you know, uh, there's no compulsion as long as you're not a Muslim. But the minute you say you're not a Muslim, so how can you do that? You can't leave. You're chosen into uh, you 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 uh, you know you were born into this. This is good for you. And ultimately, it becomes uh, it, it comes down to victim blaming. Either you are threatened or you are told you're not clever enough or you haven't understood it or you're just misguided. This is just a phase. And ultimately, the scariest thing is the, is, is the threat of getting killed. That has happened in the UK. It wasn't it wasn't strictly an apostate or, or a non-believer, but then Ahmed, somebody yeah. drove across the country to kill an Ahmed yeah. man in, uh, in Glasgow. Yeah. And so that, that, that does happen. And yeah. that's, Shari, that's Shari, um, uh, just very, very quickly, because we're coming up to the news and we'll, sure. we'll I, I mean, apologies to Dipin, who's been holding on for a while. Um, we'll, we'll come to you after the news. But Shari, just very, very briefly, do you, do, do you in terms of numbers, what do you think? Do you think is very few Asians who leave the religion or, you know, a, a sort of like a, a sizable number or quite a lot? I think there are many more than can openly admit it. And that's why finding name Thayers and Faith for Faithless's work so important because they put love first rather than any sort of uh, conflict. And I think the numbers are way more than we can estimate even. Uh, very, very quickly, what, what, are you, what are you basing that on? What, what makes you think that there are a lot uh, people, more people? People I meet, people I talk to, people I interact with on a daily basis and what I see happening online. Um, I think it's a bigger trend than we can recognize. And, and the conversation, the way it changes when you get to know someone and what they profess and what they actually feel like and the, and the doubts that they have, I think the numbers are, are much greater. OK, thank you very much for that. That's Sharik, who's been telling us his story uh, in terms of whether it's hard for young Asians to admit they're not religious. This is the British Asian Sound. On digital radio and on your mobile. BBC Asian Network. Good morning, it's 11 o'clock. I'm Dilnea, live on the BBC Asian Network. Coming up between now and midday, the former police officer who fought and won a racism case against London's Metropolitan Police has put his side of the story in a book. Stay with me to hear that. And then I'll be chatting to some guests who want to help Asians recognise the early signs of a stroke. And, of course, we'll finish off our conversation about whether it's harder for young Asians to say they're not religious. You can text on 81869 or email thebigdebate at bbc.co.uk. First, the news with Anka Desai. Bill, thanks very much. Good morning. Our top story around a million NHS staff in England, including nurses, porters and paramedics, are to be offered a pay rise of about 6% over the next three years. The deal is expected to be announced by unions and the government today. John Williams is an a &E nurse who earns around £30,000 a year. I do worry about the um, staff that have been serving for quite a long time. From what I gather, there isn't going to be a huge increase in, in the wages there. And to be realistic, this pay rise over three years is not in line with inflation. So it's still not a huge pay rise. Um, and it's still, in, in real terms, it's perceived as um, a, a pay cut again. The Kremlin has criticised the British ambassador to Russia for deciding not to attend a meeting at the Russian Foreign Ministry this morning to discuss the poisoning of a former spy and his daughter in Salisbury. The government here has accused the Russian state of direct involvement in the attack. The Cambridge academic whose app was used to gather personal data from millions of Facebook users has said that he's been made a scapegoat. The social media firm and the data company Cambridge Analytica are being investigated in both the US and the UK over how they used information. They've both denied any wrongdoing. And the number of people who are out of work rose slightly in the three months to January, up by 24,000 to 1.45 million. It's the second month in a row that the official figures have shown an increase in unemployment. Around 4,000 Muslim children in the UK 
day are in Cairn. The number's growing. More than half of them, though, are spending time living in non-Muslim homes. Now, a government-funded campaign is targeting Muslim families to come forward to foster or adopt. Imam Abdullah Hassan is from the charity Penny Appeal. They're behind this project. They're not really ba- barriers from the Islamic perspective. In fact, Islam encourages looking after the children. Not only encourages, in certain situations, we found that the scholars agreed that it can be obligatory from an Islamic perspective to adopt and foster, given the dire need of Muslim families to foster and adopt in the UK. More than 100 girls who were abducted from their school in Nigeria last month by the militant group Boko Haram have been released unharmed. Families say they're concerned, though, for the welfare of five girls who were not returned. And police in Texas say the man they suspect of carrying out a series of parcel bomb attacks has died. The suspect was a 24-year-old white male who blew himself up in his car while being pursued by officers, according to Austin Police Chief Brian Manley. As members of the Austin Police Department SWAT team approached the vehicle, The suspect detonated a bomb inside the vehicle, knocking one of our SWAT officers back, and one of our SWAT officers fired at the suspect as well. The suspect is deceased uh, and has significant injuries from a blast that occurred from detonating a bomb inside his vehicle. Sports and in cricket, England captain Joe Root says he's been impressed with how all-rounder Ben Stokes has handled his impending return to test cricket. Stokes is set to play in the first test in New Zealand in the early hours of tomorrow morning, six months since he last played in a test match. Meanwhile, the West Indies, where well, they're struggling, they've just been bowled out for 198 against Scotland in their crucial World Cup qualifier. Now, the winner will qualify for the tournament in England next year. So, uh, the Scots will need 199 for the victory. A uh, poor batting performance from the West Indies. We saw Chris Gale a bold first ball a lot early. We'll keep you posted on developments in this match uh, as and when we get them. And just some other breaking news to bring you as well. Yap Stam has uh, left Reading Football Club as manager by mutual consent. Uh, we'll have our next Asian Hour News and Sport Bulletin coming up for you at midday. BBC Asian Network. Still Nayar. Dil Nayar. Makes me sound like a superhero, doesn't it? I like it. Uh, it is Dil Nayar, and this is a big debate on BBC Asian Network. Uh, this morning I've been asking, is it hard for young Asians to admit they're not religious? That's because a survey says that 70% of 16 to 29 year olds in Britain have no religion. Um, we want to, I just want to finish off some of the callers. Um, finish off? No, that sounds really bad, doesn't it? I just want to hear what some of our callers have to say. Um, we, we, we left Dipping hanging on for a while and we've also got Pretty. Uh, Dipping, apologies. Uh, you've been holding on for a long time. What That's do you think? Is, is it hard for young Asians to admit they're not religious? It is very hard. Because? Because the Orthodox religions have basically let down the younger generation for decades. Uh, in what way? Well, because they are not imparting the deep spiritual uh, uh, knowledge that every religion has. And but... every religion has something to contribute towards development of human race. But can't but you're, you're implying that it's, it's not so much that the people want to leave is just that they haven't been told about the religion properly but because there are there are some people and we've heard from them um this morning Saba and others that actually they, they just don't believe why why is it so hard to accept that actually they may not want to be because religious these religious people they call themselves religious leaders they have no idea of the deep metaphysical the occult uh, understanding of the spiritual disciplines. Mm. Have you have you had, had an experience where somebody has said to you that they're not religious? That's fine. I have. I, I'm no many uh, uh, atheists. I have wonderful conversation with them. Yeah. Then somebody who actually present himself as a religious person. But the thing is that I what I find puzzling is that you're you're suggesting that actually the atheists are that because they don't really properly have a true understanding of religion, that if they knew that, they would then become religious. But actually, a lot of atheists or people who don't believe are just as committed to that as people who are religious are. Shouldn't everybody be able to be free to decide for themselves? Look, we don't have a a caliber like Swami Vivekananda, Guru Nanak, Kabir, Yogananda, Sivananda... Uh, 
all these great spiritual giants that we had, we don't have nowadays. Uh, it is very sad for Christianity, Islam, Judaism, that they never had uh, these great figures like we have in Hinduism. Uh, they, the only last person I could think of was uh, St. Peter, and before that, uh, Christ. And, yeah, but so, but the, and, the, the, the thing is that some, a lot of people will probably who have no faith, could well respect all those people uh, and respect them as great thinkers, great believers and all of that, but disagree with them. And then there may be the other people who think, actually, there's a lot of great thinking going on on religion now at the moment. Why can't people just be allowed to believe whatever they do or don't themselves? Right. I I tell you what, my background is yoga and we study science, basically. Yoga is science. What What we study in yoga... For instance, like mantra yoga, what do we do? We study uh, sonic vibration. Uh, Raja yoga, what we do study? We study uh, uh, light energy and frequency of light, how we interact with this light and how we can radiate to heal, uplift others, inspire others, make the world better. Uh, Interaction with nature, nature spirits, all these things are missing in Orthodox religion. Okay. And in fact, I maintain that if Orthodox religions don't teach their young people yoga, I say to young people, leave those religions, because they're a total waste of time. Okay, thank you very much. I, I, I do yoga, and, and I probably, people will probably think I'm a waste of time, when, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, uh, Dipin. Um, and apologies again for ho- keeping you holding on for so long. That's Dipin from Leicester. Uh, I want to bring in, finally, Priti, uh, who's from Leeds, who we, you know, contacted us. Uh, Priti, what do you think? Is it hard for young Asians to admit they're not religious? Hi, Bill. Um yeah, I just sent you a text about, yeah, why I got it. It, it. Basically, what I mentioned in my text was that humanity should be our religion now. And that is what we all should think. I mean, it's what the world is and what we, how we're interacting with each other. Just breaking it down to religious sort of... Uh, but yeah, going back to your question... But isn't, isn't, pretty, isn't, isn't that, in a sense, um, I hope you don't mind me saying, isn't that wrong as well to sort of say humanity should be our religion? Shouldn't people who want to have religion have religion, be allowed to have religion, and those who don't want to have religion not have religion? Should be, absolutely. That is, that is what I mean to say here. Yes. In all... When you look, when you break it down, isn't the the crux of each religion uh, more or less is that one God and the fact that we all, it's the it's the it's the human element in terms of peace, uh, brotherhood, doing good for the others. Doesn't it already break down to that? When you really kind of look at look at each religion and what it stands for, uh, when we kind of start building up on the other aspects and that you're born into this religion and you have to stick on to this religion are you okay. kind of uh, you can't that is something that see coming you, from a person who uh, received, pretty I'm your your your, your 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 line's not great so i just wanted to very quickly ask you have you got an experience what about yourself are you religious or non-religious i am i am religious I'm, or non-religious Which i am one? a sikh i am a sikh yeah. but i wouldn't i'm not a sikh who'd be sitting and praying every day or would be going to the gurdara every day yeah i believe i believe in my i believe in the, the belief yeah there's lots of different ways that you can be um, yeah. a, a yeah. muslim a sikh or hindu or exactly, you know, christian exactly. but, then, yeah, um, but what about do you do you have any um experience yourself or somebody who uh, has it decided actually they don't have any religion. I mean, it's my own personal. Ex- I mean, I've got two boys. I've both of yeah. them are growing up very differently. My fourteen-year-old at the moment, except for the fact that yes, he looks like a Sikh. Uh, he doesn't know a word of Punjabi. He doesn't know anything, and he's kind of in his own. So he's trying to kind of understand yeah. the religion, and he's trying to kind of come to terms. I'm not going to force it down his throat. But I grew up. I came here. My uh, mindset and my views changed. He has to do it on his own sort of pace in his own way and how he understands his religion, whether he does it or not, does he, how, it's a very difficult uh, topic to kind of teach children. You can't, you can't shove it down the throat. It has to be, they have to learn who and what their religion stands for themselves. I can't send him to Punjabi, I mean, if you send him to Punjabi school every Sunday, but that's just been kind of forcing him to kind of run. But it's okay. the way I learned, kind of understand. It's 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 the gosh, what the right word you heard would be is I 
I grew into my religion in terms of uh, when I actually started understanding what I really stand about, okay. what I really stand for. Prithi, thank you very much. Thank you for holding on and thank you for sharing your views and opinions. Let me quickly rattle through some of the messages that we had. Uh, one texter says, remember, um, uh, I say this quite a lot, so do remember, um, please give your name and where you're contacting us from because it's great to name check both. So this one says, great topic, says one of the reasons why um, people may not be able to tell their parents is because the parents may not understand their reasonings and their questions towards a religion they're told to follow. The previous generation generally tended to just accept what they were told without questioning it, no matter what. Well, I mean, they, they may well disagree with you on that, but thanks for sharing your views. Um, and Harmit has texted in to say, hi, all the Sikh followers that I know of are married to a non-Sikh, uh, have either left the religion or have become atheists. If they have somehow managed to cling on, uh, the offsprings definitely have abandoned the faith of their ancestors. Thank you very much for all your views and your opinions and for sharing them as well. Remember, you can carry on this discussion on Asian Network's Facebook page, but remember, you do that while you're listening to the show as well. Well, you don't know.